morning and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Russ Sunday morning Bible study. We're going to be looking at verses from the ninth chapter of Acts. And uh, this will be the story, uh, the account of the conversion, we call it, of uh, Saul of Tarsus, who would later come to be known as Paul, the great uh, Christian missionary. <clears throat> so I encourage you to get a Bible or a scripture device and go to Psalm, uh, Acts chapter 9. And after we have our prayer, we'll read verses there and, and uh, share with you thoughts about them. Father, I do thank you again for the privilege of presenting this Bible study. And I pray that you will uh, help me uh, to have the thoughts and the words that you uh, can use to present something that will be useful to any and all who might hear this Bible study. Uh, I thank you for the, for the life and ministry of Paul or Saul of Tarsus and the impact that uh, his life had and continues to have upon the Christian community and the world. <clears throat> and I pray that uh, that you will use the, use the thoughts that are presented today to encourage us, maybe to convict us, maybe to just cause us to think more dip deeply and to seek your guidance more about uh, the ministry that, that Paul had and that uh, how you may want us to learn from it. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, last week's lesson uh, really uh, preceded the uh, sermon. It was from Acts chapter 8, and it was uh, talking about the uh, uh, character that we tend to know and refer to as the Ethiopian eunuch, who was a God-fearing uh, uh, Ethiopian who had uh, gone to uh, Jerusalem to worship. He was... Uh, uh, trying to, he was a seeker. There's no doubt about it. That's, he was seeking God and the message of God and the truth of God. And uh, he gave that account. Well, right after that um, account, it told uh, uh, that. Uh, Actually, and that was chapter 7 of, uh, of the book of Acts. I may have said chapter 8. But uh, uh, in, in Acts chapter 8, it begins to talk about, uh, at the end of uh, chapter 7, Stephen, one of the, one of the uh, seven uh church leaders who was chosen because he was a godly person filled with the Holy Spirit of God uh, to to help with the problems that uh, that arose there in the early church and uh, and his ministry he was so powerful in his teaching and preaching Stephen was that the Jewish religious leaders uh, quickly uh, decided they needed to get rid of him. He was help. He was leading so many people to come to faith in Jesus Christ, and so they stoned him and killed him. And Paul, Saul of Tarsus, was there among them and uh, consenting to it. And then uh, 
uh, in chapter uh, 8, uh, the, uh, uh, the time of persecution uh, of the early Christians, and then that led into the account of, of Philip encountering the Ethiopian eunuch. But now, let's pick on up at, in chapter 9 uh, about Saul. Saul, uh, verse 1 says, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord of Jesus, went to the high priest there in Jerusalem and obtained letters or permission from him addressed to the various synagogues in Damascus where he was going so that if he found any any followers of Jesus, he could have them, or he could arrest them and bring them uh, back to Jerusalem. Uh, so now let's pick up at verse 3. As he journeyed, that's uh, Saul, uh, he was from Tarsus. Tarsus is a city in Asia Minor. And uh, as he journeyed and came near, this would have been from Jerusalem going toward Damascus, which is in, in Syria, modern-day Syria. Uh, suddenly a light shone around him, around Saul, from heaven. And Saul, uh, falling to the ground, heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So this on this trip, and he is uh, he's trying to uh, squelch, uh, to, to put down uh, the Christian movement uh, at this point, very aggressively. Uh, but suddenly on his way to Damascus, and that's what he's going to be doing, trying to find followers this new movement called the Way, uh, followers of Jesus. And he's going to uh, take them into custody and transport them back to um, Jerusalem uh, to be uh, uh, chastised or uh, disciplined by the Jewish leadership there, the Sanhedrin. And suddenly uh, a light shines down from heaven, it says, verse 3. Uh, that's important because uh, it was not just the sunlight. Uh, probably may have not even been sunlight. might have been shining that day. I don't know. But there was a light which was an extraordinary light and from it was a heaven sent light that shone down on Saul and then a voice he hears a voice uh, presumably also from heaven and the voice says Saul Saul why are you persecuting me so the voice says you're persecuting me Saul why uh, the voice from heaven and uh, so Saul uh, falls to the ground. And uh, then he responds, verse 5, Saul says to the voice, Who are you, Lord? Now, there's been various possible interpretations of, the, of his response, Who are you, Lord? Uh, Lord was sometimes used in that time just as a courtesy address to someone uh, of respect and uh, uh, honor. But it could have also been that he had, that it's identified with God, uh, who of course is his Lord and was referred to throughout the Bible as Lord, uh, 
And it could be, in fact, as I think the correct answer is, that it turned out, whether he knew it or not, that he was addressing Jesus, the Son of God, who at this point had already been crucified, resurrected by the power of God, spent 40 days on earth uh, encountering his followers and other people, ascended back after giving his apostles uh, instructions uh, for their ministry of being a witness to all the world, Jerusalem, the outlying territory, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Well, this is the setting. Uh, he's been ascended for, we don't know exactly what period of time has left, but some period of time. <clears throat> when the Christian movement is growing, but persecution of the Christian is also growing. And the voice uh, says, why are you persecuting me? Saul wants to know who the voice is. And uh, he says, the voice identified himself as Jesus. He said, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Uh, what an extraordinary encounter with Jesus, with God. This is Jesus in his ministry as accounted in the New Testament, uh, particularly in the Gospel of John, identified himself as God, as the awaited, prophesied about Messiah who had been foretold to the Jewish people for centuries, uh, who would come as the promise of God to, to present a different way, a new way of worshiping God. And uh, so Jesus identifies himself to Saul, and then he says, Jesus, the voice of Christ, says, Arise, go into the city, that would be Damascus, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him, they, he had an entourage of companions with him. We don't know how many exactly who they were, but he, he was not traveling alone. It says, they stood there speechless. Uh, Saul was on his knees, but he's told by Jesus to arise. And uh, they stood there speechless. They heard the voice, but saw no one. Well, uh, verse 8, Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him, his companions led him by hand, and brought him into the city of Damascus. So we don't know if the light was so bright that it blinded Saul. We don't know that it blinded the others with him, although apparently they could see the, the witness, the light. But the light appeared, apparently was focused on Saul. They heard the voice uh, and I would presume that they heard the voice say, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And they may have heard the voice say, in response to Saul's question, who to the voice, who are you? They may have heard the voice identify himself as Jesus and tell Saul to get up and go into the city. And he was going to, he would receive instruction there on what he needed to do. It's interesting that uh, when Saul is struck down by the light and the voice and the presence of Christ, just the presence of Christ should have been and is, I believe, would be, is enough to drive anyone who encounters it to their knees. Remember when 
when the, when Judas Iscariot led the uh, uh, some of the Jewish religious leaders uh, to the Garden of Gethsemane uh, the night that to arrest Jesus with some of the uh, uh, temple uh, security guards with them, and uh, when Jesus identified himself as Jesus, it said that they fell to the ground just knowing that they were in the presence of Jesus, dropped them to their knees. The power of Christ, the presence of Christ. So regardless of what the other companions of Saul heard or witnessed, it says, they, uh, Saul arose, he opened his eyes, tried to see. Apparently the light caused him to shut his eyes. He was hearing the voice. And he responded, but and he hears the response of Jesus. But um, he, he, when he gets up, he opens his eyes, but he can't see. He said, they, his companions, uh, led him by hand and brought him into Damascus. Verse 9, and he was there three days without sight. He was blinded for three days. And he says, neither ate nor drank. So, he was in a uh, state of shock from his encounter with Jesus. He 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 didn't he he didn't eat. He didn't. I'm sure he, he wasn't hungry, and he he, I mean, he was probably urged by his companions to eat, but he couldn't. He didn't, and then he couldn't even drink anything. It says now that's really something. Uh, but uh, and then the uh, scene kind of changes from where uh, Saul is with his companions, and it was uh, it was at a, a place uh, later later we identified in Damascus as Straight Street, and. Uh, uh, verse 10 says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Okay, where did he come from? Well, he's just a follower of Jesus. We don't know the background here. But he was he lived there in Damascus, was a follower uh, of Jesus. Uh, and uh, he says that he was there, and the Lord appeared to him, Ananias in a vision and calls his name. And Ananias responds, Here, am, here my Lord, or yes, Lord. Uh, so the Lord said to Ananias, Arise and go to the street called Straight, there in Damascus, and inquire at the house of Judas. Uh, apparently, the house that Saul's companion had taken him to belonged to someone named Judas. Don't know much about him. He may have been, he may have been uh, one of the uh, Jewish persecutors of Christians because that's where Saul's companions took him. Maybe that's where he was planning to go in his first stop there anyway. But uh, the, God tells Ananias, go there uh, because there's someone there named Saul of Tarsus and he is praying, and, and and then God goes ahead and tells Ananias what about a vision that Saul is having there at the house of Jesus. He says, he has seen you, Ananias, coming in the vision to him and putting your hands on him so that he might receive his sight, regain his sight. All right, so that's the voice of God telling Ananias, uh, giving him this assignment. Verse 13, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many things about this man, Saul of Tarsus, how much harm he has done to your followers in Jerusalem. And here, now, now we could say, he has authority from the chief priest to bind over all who call on your name, all who follow 
you, Lord. Uh, in other words, and I was saying, I don't know about this, <laughs> what you're telling me to do, Lord. Uh, you're telling me to go to a man, and we already know rumors already spread through Jerusalem that he's been given authority to arrest any followers of Jesus. But God, verse 15, but the Lord said to him, and I said, go. He just said, go, go, for he is my chosen vessel to bear my name before Gentiles, non-Jewish people, kings, and the children of Israel. That's three categories. He's, uh, God is telling Ananias that Saul, that he, God, has chosen Saul to be an ambassador of the gospel, which is completely unbelievable, uh, seemingly, to Ananias, to Gentiles, non-Jewish people, to kings, to those in governmental authority, and to the Jews, children of Israel. Verse 16, the voice of God, stand as continues, for I will show him, will show Saul, how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, the message of of God to Ananias is uh, go, go into, over to the straight street, find the house of Judas, find Saul there. He's blind. I, he's been blinded. And and uh, and uh, I want to use you to give him his sight back and to, and to tell him this message from me, God is saying to Ananias, that you're going to use Saul, are going to be my ambassador. You're going to spread the gospel of Jesus, and you're going to suffer many things on account of that ministry. Verse 17, Ananias went his way. He, he, he doesn't argue. Uh, he has this initial questioning of God because of the reputation of Saul but he responds obediently. He entered the house, that would be the house of Judas on Straight Street, and laying hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road here to Damascus, as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, there fell from Saul's eyes something like scales. This must have been some type of physical phenomena, phenomenon that, that Saul, maybe his other companions there at the house of Jesus, Jesus perhaps, and Ananias could actually see something tangible falling from Saul's eyes. And it says, and he received his sight immediately. And he arose and was baptized. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot to take in here. Uh, first of all, is that Ananias identifies the voice that he is, uh, the vision that he's had at his home. Uh, uh, as Jesus and uh, and as the Lord. There's an identity of Jesus and God there that is just, is just blended together without further explanation. It's just accounted as the same. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he frequently identified himself as one with the Father, his Father God. Uh, I'm thinking about some verses, particularly in the Gospel of John, but in other places where he said, where he identified himself as being God, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Lord, God. And that is reconfirmed, or confirmed, we could say, here. 
uh, and he announces to Saul that Saul is uh, is going to receive is about to receive the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Well, it means that the presence of God was going to and the presence of Jesus was going to come into Saul and his life and his soul and his personality and his mind and his heart and every way that you want to express it. He was going to experience regeneration, conversion there, be saved, whatever terminology, evangelistic terminology you prefer. That's what happened to Saul. And that's what Ananias was announcing. And it says immediately, uh, the first thing that happens is that he can see transformation. He was blind, now he can see. And uh, he gets up and he wants to, he wants to obey. He wants to make a positive response to this conversion, this experience, this regeneration, this salvation. So he gets baptized. That was the way that in the time of Jesus, the New Testament time, that they responded to faith with they made their response of faith in Jesus known. They identified that by being baptized. And that's what he does here. Uh, says he was baptized. Now, that's all I'm going to say about, about the baptism and his conversion here. Uh, verse 19. So, when he received food, now at that point, he's able to eat. Things are, things are right. Things are made right in every respect with Saul of Tarsus. The great uh, skeptic, the persecutor, the unbeliever, uh, the hostile force against Christ Jesus and the gospel is changed. It's changed. And... Uh, uh, he uh, so so he can eat. He's hungry. and not eaten for three days. Anything to drink? Already three days. So says he received food and was strengthened. He gave he got some strength back. He can wake after three days there. Uh, then Saul spent some days with the disciples, the followers of Jesus at Jerusalem. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 20. It's not in our, our vocal verses, but it says immediately he preached the Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, in the synagogues there in Damascus. It was a, apparently had more than one synagogue there, Jewish synagogue. And he, his message was that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, Verse 21 says, Then all who heard this kind of preaching were amazed. They were amazed. They knew a miraculous thing had happened. Well, I've taken all our time in just going through the scriptures, which is as good as you can do, really. I mean, the scriptures speak for themselves. Uh, and the Holy Spirit speaks through the scriptures. So I trust that as God has spoken to me, even today, even right now, during this Bible study, a reading, rereading, I'd already read them earlier today, uh, but, and in preparation, but reading these, the Holy Spirit speaks through His Word. Now, He may not tell each of us the exact same thing, but He uses God's Word to guide us, to direct us. As he and that's what he did there with Saul. So I think just reading the scriptures, and you can see we can raise all kinds of questions at this point. Why did Saul experience such a dramatic uh, and extraordinary uh, conversion experience? Well, he was an extraordinary opponent of the gospel, 
might be one reason. And he was going, God was going to use him perhaps uh, in a way that he's almost used no other person. Uh, uh, he's used many people uh, that are, their stories are recorded in scripture. In the Bible, but he was going to use, and he did use Saul. He would later change his name to Paul. So, as we read of the experience of, of Saul, we see the power of God. We see the power of, of God raising up the gospel, the good news that has been accomplished by the life of death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a way for you and for me to have righteousness be brought into a righteous, acceptable, forgiven relationship with God through our faith, our reliance, our trust in Jesus and his death and his resurrection. Uh, from the grave, so we should we should cherish that uh, that gospel that Saul was confronted with, and that transformed his life. It it transforms our life sometimes in ways we don't fully understand, but we always have a lot of questions that we want answered. We want to figure out details that God probably is not interested in us figuring out. Now, that's not to say that we shouldn't study God's Word, study, pray, study uh, spiritual teaching uh, to learn as much as we can to build our faith, to grow our faith, but we're never going to understand it all. We just trust, we believe, and we put our faith in God through Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time, for sending this account of the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, becoming Paul, the great Christian missionary. Help us to realize that we have a ministry. I have a ministry. Each one hearing this Bible study has a ministry. They're all different but they all involve being a witness, a witness for Christ, a witness of the power and work of God in our lives.